I wanted to do a quick video today on the audio and MIDI exports and patterning. Um, I've got a beat here. Let's listen to it. Okay, so I have a beat and I want to export this. And um, so patterning has a bunch of different export options, um, but the idea is, you know, I've made something on the iPad and maybe I want to bring it over to the computer to load into an Ableton set um, or loops, um, you know, to bring into Logic or Pro Tools or whatever. So I'm gonna go to the main file drop down menu. And at the bottom of the file section, we have export audio and MIDI. Um, and this brings up the, the export menu. So there's a whole bunch of different settings here and I'll just kind of go over them hopefully to cover all of the different options, there are quite a few. So the first one is our file type, and this is probably the most important thing. The first file type is called ONPS. This is the, um, well, it stands for Olympia Noise Patterning Song. That's the file type of a, a patterning project or a song. Now, just to clarify why we have this here, and also just you can save a file. When you export the ONPS file, you're also embedding in the file all of the samples. So this is for if you wanna export your file, put it on a different iPad, bring it over to the computer to use the plugin version of it. So it will embed all the samples and package it up into an ONPS file that we can use on another device. So that's what that is for. The audio export is, um, it's not just a, a clever name, it's actually for exporting the audio from your project. Um, and this is where a lot of our export settings come in handy. So when we're exporting the audio, audio, we can choose to export just the stereo master track, we can export individual tracks, we can export the current pattern, all of the patterns, or the timeline. So there's a bunch of different options here. So our first option is between the master and the individual tracks. The master, if you export the master, you're gonna get a stereo file that has all of your tracks and effects in one stereo file. If you do individual tracks, you will get all eight of your instrument tracks bounced individually. And each of those will also include, be run through the effects as well. So if you have delay on your track, it will show up on your track. If you have settings in the master distortion, it'll all get run through that main out, but there'll be eight separate tracks for those. So that's our master and our individual tracks. Our next section here, our next setting to work to worry about is our um, what we're actually exporting time-wise. So you can choose the timeline if you wanna export a song that's in your timeline. You can choose the current pattern, which will just be whatever my current selected pattern is. Let me go back, in this case, A2. Um, or you can say all patterns. And if you do all patterns, it will go through every single pattern in the project and make individual files for them. Keep in mind, this can make a lot of files. If you have it set to individual tracks and you have 10 patterns, you're gonna end up with 80 sound files um, because it's gonna export um, eight tracks for your 10 patterns. And then this last, um, last of the export settings, we can decide if we want to make a loop. If you, if you choose the loop setting, what's gonna happen is that it will actually play through the loop twice and record the second go round of it so that it makes a perfect loop. Essentially what it does is it'll play through and any effects like trails or whatever will get bled over into the loop and it'll, this is probably too technical for this video. Anyways, it'll make a perfect loop for you. And, and so that's really great if you want a loop that you can put into like Ableton's clip view and, and make perfect loops from. Trail is going to play through the loop stop it and let any like reverb tail or delay tail play out and then it'll stop recording at that point. So it'll basically make a non-looped version of your of your export that has the reverb tail or, or sound trail um, attached to it. Clip is going to just like literally cut the beginning and end of the loop, not worry about reverb tails or making it sound like a perfect loop. I don't remember why this is even an option. It was, it's been like eight years since I made this choice. So I don't know what I was thinking. The file type. Okay, so when we're, <laughs> when we're, when we're, when we're, <laughs> when we're doing, um, when we're doing the audio export, we can choose either AIFF or Waves. These are both um, 
PCM or just uncompressed audio formats, they are effectively the same with just like different, the, da the data is structured a little differently, but it's the same information. And you can choose the bit depth, either 16, 24, or 32 bits, and a sample rate of either 44.1 and 48 kilohertz. I could talk about these things, the sample rate and bit depth for a long time, um, but I think I, I think I won't right now, maybe some other day. What you should know is that um, a CD quality audio is 16 bit 44.1 kilohertz. So if you were gonna make a CD, directly from this file, then that would be the way to go. I would usually recommend just like 24 bit 48. Um, the internal sample rate of an iPad, if you're not connected to an external audio interface is 48 kilohertz. So 24 or 48 is a, is a good option. AIFFs and WAVs are the same, but some apps might not work with AIFFs. Um, WAVs are a little bit more common, but they're, again, they're essentially the same thing. When I'm set up, Everything to, to export here, I'm gonna choose the, I'm gonna hit the export button and we get all of our files being made. When you make an export in patterning, it will save them into the files app on my iPad and then you'll go to patterning three and you'll go to exports. And I've made quite a few exports apparently, um, but uh, all of those files are gonna be in the project name and you'll see all the files we just created. Share them from here, um, get them onto another device and whatnot. You can also, um, directly from here, you can hit the share button if you wanna airdrop them somewhere else, it'll airdrop that whole folder. And this doesn't work so well on the iPad, but if you're running this in like Ableton as a DAW, in, as a plugin inside Ableton, you can actually just drag and drop these files. So this is really nice. And I actually show this in a video, um, in the video on using uh, patterning inside Ableton that you can just drag and drop from this menu into Ableton. So it's really nice if you're just kind of like making beats in, in patterning and then every once in a while you're like, oh, I like this, I'm just gonna turn this into audio. And that can be a good workflow for some people in, in a DAW situation. Backtracking a little bit, we also have a file type Ableton. This is really great. We have a the ability to export your patterning project directly to an Ableton Live set. Patterning does come with a copy of Ableton Live Lite 12. So if you don't have Ableton, you can just click on this download button and put in your email address and you will get a license for, for Ableton um, Live Lite version. So when you're creating an Ableton Live set, you have slightly fewer choices because the way the set is, the, the way the Ableton Live set is structured is, is specific, but you can either choose the master output or individual tracks. If you use the master output, you're gonna get, in Ableton, you'll end up with a session view with a single stereo track with each of your patterns. And if you choose individual tracks, you'll end up with a session view with eight tracks and clips on each of those. If you have MIDI enabled on your tracks, you will also end up with MIDI tracks with the MIDI data from patterning converted into an Ableton Live clip. You can choose your able, your audio um, file type here, just like with the other audio export. I use that all the time. I love to, um, especially before patterning was a plugin, I loved starting with a beat here and then moving over to Ableton and kind of adding other instruments on top of it. The last file type here is the MIDI file type. And this is a new thing in patterning 3.1. Um, we can now export MIDI from our from our clips and use that to just create MIDI files. We can also choose master or individual tracks. And when you create this, it's gonna create MIDI files for each of our tracks. Again, you can drag and drop these. If you're in a DAW, you could drag and drop these to a blank MIDI track and import the audio there. Or we can just go back to the files app and take those MIDI files um, wherever we wanna use them. So I believe that's it for our audio export options, audio and MIDI export options. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Happy patterning.